Support Name Explained on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. The award for the single city of the highest amount of names has to go to none other than the city of Jerusalem. This is a seriously ancient city, which means it's had a huge variety of names after the thousands of years that it stood on our planet. When I say it has had many names, I'm not just talking about names it's had in the past. This city is considered to have many names even today. Don't quite believe me? Well, what if I told you that in just Hebrew alone, the city is seen as having 70 different names. Some sources even point to this being 72 different names as opposed to just 70. These 70 plus names of course include the name Jerusalem itself, but also names like Bashan meaning fruitful, or Hadlahach meaning dwelling. How in use all 70 plus of these names are however I'm not too sure. Like if you were to ask two Hebrew speakers who live in the city as to where they live, are they going to give you two different names on this list or both just say Jerusalem? If you happen to be living in the city, please do give us a clear insight into this aspect. I always love hearing from people who directly relate to the topic of my videos. Also there's a complete list of these 70 names down in the description. We won't be covering all of them here but feel free to go check them for yourself. I genuinely cannot think of a city with more names than Jerusalem. Though if I'm missing out something obvious here once again, let me know down below. And away from these 70 plus Hebrew names, there are even more names from other languages in the city's past. A variety of languages and cultures have called this city home in the past and still do to this day. And these different languages brought along their own names. So today, let's look into the history of this city and find out about the many names that came, went and stuck around. Before we look into that however, it's worth asking ourselves why this city has been under control of so many different people to begin with. While there aren't many cities as old as Jerusalem, there are still some pretty old cities on our planet, yet these other ancient places haven't been claimed as many times as Jerusalem. What makes Jerusalem so desirable? Well there seems to be a couple main reasons as to why people have battled over this city for so long. One of those being strategic importance, Jerusalem is located in a very ideal spot. It's nestled neatly between the east and west, a location many people sought after and has proven useful in the past. Though of course it's a religion that has made this city so desirable. Jerusalem is an incredibly holy city for three of the largest Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Islam and Christianity. Safe to say all three of these religions wanted a slice of the city to some degree or another. All this however has led to the city being captured at least 20 times. However for us it's probably sensible to go back to the start with the very first name we know of for the city, at least what we think might be the city's oldest known name anyway. That being Rash Alimam, this name comes from a list of enemies of the Egyptian pharaoh in the late 19th century BC, that's about 5000 years ago. We're not 100% sure however if this even is modern day Jerusalem being referenced in this name. If it is how often this is the oldest known name for the city we have, we just don't know however what it means. So what's the oldest name we have for this city that we know is definitely a name for the city? Well that honor goes to the name of Ursulim. The earliest recording we have of this name dates back to the 14th century BC, so around 3000 years ago. It was found in something known as the Amarna Letters. I'm sure you can tell from the sound and shape of this name that this is a direct precursor to that modern name of Jerusalem. This initial name would tumble through history, being picked up by different languages and cultures. They would change it and corrupt it to suit their own tongue, before it eventually became the name we have today. But where did this initial name come from? And what does it mean? Well, it's believed to come from the compounding of two Western Semitic words, with Western Semitic being an ancient language slash language family. Modern Semitic languages include the likes of Hebrew and Arabic, the two languages spoken across modern Jerusalem. The two words this name is thought to come from are Yaru meaning to establish and Shalom the name of the Canaanite god of dusk. This means that the name of Ursulim means something along the lines of the city established by Shalim or even more simply just Shalim city. If this theory is to be believed it means that this city that is so important to three of the world's largest religions is named after a god from a completely different ancient and barely followed religion entirely. There is another theory around the name however. This theory 
theory ties it closely to the Hebrew language. It's theorized that the latter part of this name comes from the Hebrew word for peace, shalom. While they definitely sound similar, especially with the modern version of the name Jerusalem, there isn't too much to support this idea. The timelines and what the Hebrew word for peace was at the time just don't quite add up. Unfortunately, we can't really get away with calling this city Jerusalem. From its ancient origins, the city started to grow, eventually becoming a Yebusit city. The Yebusits were an ancient group of people from this land. They simply called the city the city of Yebus, which gives us a pretty self-explanatory name for the city. However, this city would soon come under new rulership, that being King David. I read David got hold of the city in a couple of ways. Some sources say he purchased it from the Yezbuit, while other sources say he simply conquered it. Whatever the case, it was under his Jewish rule now and established it as his capital. It was here that the city gained a new name, which is also pretty easy to understand. Under King David, the city became known as the City of David. As a Jewish city, many other Jewish names for the city started to appear. It's from here we got names like Zion, Molia, and Shalem for the city. These were all names for just parts of the city that went on to be usable for the entire city itself. In example, Zion was initially named for the Temple Mount, but then got applied to it all. These names are part of those aforementioned 70 plus Hebrew names of Jerusalem. A distinctly non-Jewish name that the city got next however was Alia Capitolina. This was a name of Roman concoction and was given to the city once they had conquered the city for themselves in the 2nd AD during the Bar Kaaba revolts. This revolt is something that was covered extensively in an episode of my podcast, AD History. During this episode, we had Sam Aranau on to talk to us all about it. Sam is a YouTuber himself and a bastion of knowledge of Jewish history. Go listen to that episode of the podcast and then go watch all of his videos. I'll make sure to link them down below. Plugging aside, why did the Romans call this city Alia Capitolina? The first part of this name it comes from the title of Alias, one of Emperor Hadrian's titles, as he was in power during this revolt. The latter part of this name it comes from the Roman god of Jupiter Capitolinus, who they dedicated the city to. This seems to have been the name for the this seems to have been the name of choice for Rome. However, it would fall to the wayside when the city was captured during the Muslim conquest of the 7th century, but more on that a little later. Let's get back to that western somatic name of Ursulim. Despite the city already going through several name changes, it seems this name stuck around in some form or another. It eventually evolved into Yerushalem in western Semitic and then into Yerushalayim, and this is still the biblically Hebrew version of the city's name to this day. This was a relatively short journey for this name to go through. However, over in the rest of Europe, the name went on a much longer journey to become that name of Jerusalem that we have today. The aforementioned West Semitic name of Yerushalayim went on to get picked up by none other than the Greeks. When the Greeks came to translating the Bible into their own language, they adapted this name into Yerushalayim, and like we've seen with many Greek words and names, this would get acquired by the Romans. The Romans took this Greek name for the city and adapted it into Latin, where it became Yerosolima initially, and then Yerusalem in late Latin. Western Rome would of course eventually fall, but Latin would live on. Well, kind of. Latin would go on to birth a variety of languages all across Europe, one of those being French. The earliest form of French we now call Old French, and it was in Old French where the Latin name for this city became Jerusalem. At around the 500 AD mark, however, things started to change in Old French, specifically the sounds certain letters would make. One of those changes affected the letter I, which for some reason, Old French started to pronounce somewhat like a soft G sound we have today, like we see in words such as giant and urgent. This meant that the old French name for the city of Jerusalem started to be pronounced differently too, with a soft G sound at the start. This name finally reached the shores of Britain and the English language however in 1066 with the Norman conquest. From this moment in time, French stuck its claws into the English language, which has made a lasting effect on the tongue. 
Duke. Of course, this strange soft G sounding I arrived in Britain too with the Normans. This created something of an issue in English, given the letter I to pronunciations. From words of Germanic origins, I made a long I sound, like in Ireland, while in words of French origin, it made that soft G like sound. Old English borrowed this name for the city, Jerusalem, but as I'm sure you can hear, it sounds identical to the city's name today, just spelt with an I instead of a J. The two pronunciations of I in English would eventually get solved in the 17th century. This was with the creation of a whole new letter which could be used in place of the French soft G sounding I, that being the letter J. Yeah, this video is also kind of about the creation of the letter J. Surprise! This meant that many of the words in English that use this French soft G sounding I could instead use the letter J to help differentiate them more easily. This included that name of Jerusalem being changed to start with a J instead of an I, finally giving us the name Jerusalem as we know it to this day. So, just as a quick recap, we started with the Western Semitic name of Ursulum, which got adapted by the Greeks, which got adapted twice by the Romans, which got adapted by the Old French, who decided to completely change the way the first letter was pronounced, which then got adapted by the Old English, who then decided to whip up the letter J and change the first letter. As I said, this name really did tumble through history. But what's incredible is that in the grand scheme, this name actually changed very little. Ursulum and Jerusalem are still pretty similar sounding words, despite there being thousands of years of evolving between the two of them. If I could look that unchanged after thousands of years, I'd be pretty happy. What kind of special cream is Jerusalem using to stay looking so young? However, there is another side to this story entirely, that being the Arabic side of things. As mentioned, when talking about the Roman name of Aelia Capitolina, the name fell out of fashion during the Muslim conquests of the 7th century. So, what name did the now Muslim inhabitants of the city use? Well, initially they called the city Ilia, which was simply an Arabic shortening of that Roman name. Eventually, however, they created a new name, Bat al Makadis. This was the Arabic translation, the Hebrew name of the Jerusalem temple of Bait HaMikdash, meaning holy house. So this name is another example of the name of a part of the city being used for the entire city. This Arabic name was a bit of a mouthful however, so in around the 9th century AD it was shortened to just Al-Qudus meaning the holy. This name really picked up traction in the city's Muslim community and is today seen as the Arabic name for the city. As I mentioned, this is a seriously ancient and seriously interesting city with a serious amount of names. Jerusalem was suggested by Robert Griffith and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honored as the name explains patron saint of Jerusalem. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patreon is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.